Today's business is the vote on the motion to instruct H.R. 4348, offered by the gentleman from West Virginia, Mr. McKinley, on which the yeas and nays are ordered. The clerk will redesignate the motion. Motion to instruct conferees on H.R. 4348, offered by Mr. McKinley of West Virginia. The question is on the motion to instruct. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This is a five-minute vote. So this is a motion to instruct conferees on the Highway and Surface Transportation Bill. It would instruct House appointees to agree to the Senate version of the legislation and remove a provision that provides grants to cut down on the level of distracting, dr distracted driving in the country. Funding for the program ends at the end of this month. No more votes after this today. We're expecting more debate on two other motions related to the Highway and Surface Transportation Bill. Votes on those would happen sometime next week. We did show you a portion of today's White House briefing. It uh, started about 12.30, 12.40 actually, and uh, that uh, is still going on, and it's happening and available on our website at cspan.org.
On this vote, the yeas are 260, the nays are 138. The motion is adopted. Without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid on the table. For what purpose does the gentlelady from North Carolina seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I send to the desk a privileged report from the Committee on Rules for filing under the rule. The clerk will report the title. Report to accompany House Resolution 697. Resolution providing for consideration of the bill, H.R. 5973, making appropriations for agriculture, rural development, food and drug administration, and related agencies programs for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2013, and for other purposes, and providing for consideration of the bill, H.R. 5972, making appropriations for the Departments of Transportation and Housing and Urban Development and related agencies for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2013, and for other purposes. Referred to the House calendar and ordered printed. Thank you. The gentleman from Maryland, rise. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to speak out of order for one minute for the purposes of inquiring of the majority leader the schedule for the week to come. Without objection. I uh, yield to my friend, Mr. Cantor, the gentleman from Virginia, the majority leader. Uh, I thank the gentleman from Maryland, the Democratic whip, for yielding. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on Monday, the House will meet in pro forma session, but no votes are expected. On Tuesday, the House will meet at noon for morning hour and 2 p.m. for legislative business. Votes will be postponed until 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday and Thursday, the House will meet at 10 a.m. for morning hour and noon for legislative business. On Friday, the House will meet at 9 a.m. for legislative business. Last votes of the week are expected no later than 3 p.m. Mr. Speaker, the House will consider a number of bills under suspension of the rules, a complete list of which will be announced by the close of business tomorrow. In addition, the House may consider two appropriations bills next week, H.R. 5972, the Transportation, Housing, and Urban Development Appropriations Act, and H.R. 5973, the Agricultural, Rural Development, and Food and Drug Administration Act. Members are advised that the House will begin consideration of one of these two bills after the 6.30 p.m. vote series on Tuesday and should expect an additional late evening series of votes on amendments. Again, Mr. Speaker, that is on Tuesday. The House is also scheduled to consider a privilege resolution finding Eric H. Holder, Jr., Attorney General of the U.S. Department of Justice, in contempt of Congress for refusal to comply with the subpoena issued by the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. Finally, I expect the House to consider legislation dealing with both the expiring authority for our nation's highway programs as well as the pending increase in the federal subsidized student loan rate. Before I yield back, Mr. Speaker, I want to assure members that we will accommodate both the Congressional White House picnic on Wednesday night as well as the Congressional baseball game on Thursday evening. Debate may continue on appropriations amendments after the picnic and during the baseball game, but during those events, no votes will take place. I thank the gentleman and yield back. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Obviously, the gentleman has spoken to a number of very important uh, pieces of legislation, um, and I want to talk about uh, those, uh, and then I want to talk about what I believe to be a uh, diversion from the important business of this country, uh, but I will get to first the highway conference. Uh, on Friday, there will be, be 100 days since the Senate's passed a bipartisan bill, uh, a bill which uh, had 75 members of the United States Senate uh, for it. Uh, that conference has not yet reported out. I understand there is some activity on that. Uh, the House overwhelmingly voted uh, for the Walls MTI that said uh, the conferees ought to report out a conference report by tomorrow. Uh, I don't know whether that's about to happen. Uh, today is tomorrow. Uh, but we will see whether or not uh, uh, proceeds. Perhaps the gentleman can give us 
uh, some information on that issue. Um, I've offered a motion, as the gentleman knows, to instruct to give House up or down vote on the Senate bill uh, if we can't wait uh, for a bill that comes out of conference. Uh, clearly, if it doesn't come out of conference, it's going to cost us a lot of jobs. Uh, it will not protect the 1.9 million jobs that the Senate bill protects, and it will not create uh, approximately a million more additional jobs. As the gentleman knows, uh, it is our view we've been considering a lot of legislation which does not create jobs, does not impact positively the growth in our economy. But I think there is little dispute that the highway bill will, in fact, do that. Uh, and in addition, uh, there's been a lot of talk about certainty. Uh, I think, and I agree with the premise that we ought to give certainty to the economy and to uh, employers and employees and to states and subdivisions and private sector contractors. Uh, obviously, if we don't extend the highway bill, uh, that will not uh, be the case. In fact, it will be a very uncertain world in which they will be operating. Uh, so can my friend tell me what... Uh, uh, what the status of uh, the conference is, uh, if he knows. I will tell you that, uh, uh, very frankly, the Democratic conferees uh, do not know the status of the uh, conference. And I will yield to my friend. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I thank the gentleman. And I would say to the gentleman, uh, the conferees continue uh, to work in a bicameral nature. The discussions are proceeding between Chairman Micah, Chairman Boxer, uh, and as the gentleman knows, uh, I have said before, uh, we are desirous of seeing, seeing a bill done, as the gentleman said, to afford more certainty uh, to the folks who are relying uh, on uh, the funding of our nation's transportation program. And uh, we would certainly think this would be a huge benefit to producing a bill prior to the expiration of the program next week. Uh, but knowing full well, none of us, or most of us, do not want to see any kind of shutdown uh, in the funding uh, that we would be prepared in any way to make sure that does not happen. But the intention is to allow these conferees to continue to do their work, uh, and hopefully we'll have a bill to vote on next week. I yield back. Well, I, hope the I thank the gentleman for that information. I hope the gentleman is correct. <clears throat> My concern, uh, and the concern on this side, continues to be and the position, as, as uh, Mr. Schuster, who is one of the ranking members and whose dad, of course, chaired the Transportation Committee at one point in time, uh, there was a story that uh, Schuster acknowledged that the House GOP's leadership's inability to pass its five-year, $260 billion transportation bill, quote, weakens our hand in conference. And this, this is what concerned me, Mr. Leader. But he added, quote, it's not an option to give away the House position, close quote. Now, he was referring to, of course, a bill which has not passed this House, has not even been brought, brought to the floor of this House. Uh, and uh, they, that article went on to say House Republicans, Republicans say they're willing to walk away from the highway bill talks if they cannot get what they want. Now, th this was an interview. Uh, uh, I'm a yield to you. I, I see Mr. Mr. Schuster Mr. on the floor. Uh, and uh, Mr. Schuster is a friend of mine. I'd be glad to hear what he has to say on that, on that matter, and I'll yield to him. Well, I thank the gentleman for yielding. And I was, what I was referring to is we did send over a position on our, on our extension, and that was the streamlining uh, that, that we wanted in our original bill, but was in the, uh, was in the uh, extension. So that's what I was talking about. That's the House position. And, uh, and uh, as far as I can tell, things are moving in a positive direction. So, but I guess we'll be debating your... Uh, your motion to instruct, uh, instruct a little later. Well, I, I, I thank the gentleman for that information. I certainly hope that uh, uh, we are moving in a positive direction uh, because uh, we've been a long time getting to resolution of this matter. Uh, next, I would like to ask, uh, you indicated that student loans may be on the uh, calendar as well. Well, but before I do that, well, no, uh, student loans be on the floor as well. Uh, can the gentleman tell me uh, uh, what his expectation is on that, uh, if he knows? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd say to the gentleman, uh, it has been our position all along that we do not want to see the expiration uh, of the 
of the funding of the program uh, to impact the students uh, that right now are struggling. Uh, and we have uh, presented uh, to both uh, the White House as well as the gentleman's side of the aisle here in the Capitol uh, various ways of accomplishing that end in a responsible manner, in a fiscally responsible manner, so that we're not digging the hole any deeper, we're not incurring uh, any additional debt in order to do that, and uh, thus far uh, have not um, seen a willingness on the part uh, of the White House. Uh, I am aware that there are discussions ongoing on the other side of the Capitol uh, to see if there can be some resolution on this issue. And that's all I can say to the gentleman, as far as I know. I yield back. Well, I'm hopeful that we can resolve this in a way that is uh, agreeable uh, to uh, uh, at least the majority of both houses and to the President of the United States, because if we don't, as the gentleman knows, uh, we're going to increase interest rates uh, by doubling them from 3.4 to 6.8 percent. Uh, today's college students are leaving with an average of $26,000 in debt. This would add another $1,000 of, of debt to those students. Uh, and uh, uh, right now, with students owing more than a trillion dollars, uh, placing more debt on their head. And I, I, would, I would urge us, therefore, to uh, uh, come to an agreement, uh, come to an agreement that both sides uh, could uh, uh, vote for. Uh, obviously, as the gentleman knows, the House bill that passed was uh, a pay-for that uh, Democrats didn't vote for here, and uh, I think it was well known that the Senate would not agree to that, so I'm hopeful that we, we do reach an agreement uh, that will provide for its passage. Uh, now, let me ask uh, the gentleman. Uh, we have, of course, made the uh, representation that we ought to be focused on jobs. Uh, we believe that's critically important, uh, and we believe that ought to be the focus of this Congress. Uh, it's the focus of the American people. Uh, we went through, uh, in years past, uh, uh, distractions. You say, uh, in the, with just some 30 uh, full days left uh, between now and the election, that you're going to bring up a uh, a resolution that came out of committee, as I understand, yesterday, uh, without much time for consideration or deliberation, a very, very serious matter. Uh, Attorney General Holder, of course, has been involved in making sure that, uh, that votes are not suppressed all over this country. Uh, he has, in, in my view, conducted himself in a way that uh, brought credit to the Justice Department, to himself, and to this administration. Uh, I don't know. Well, let me ask the gentleman. Uh, how long uh, do you expect to spend on this uh, uh, motion? I don't think any of us have seen the, the, the final bill that's going to come to the floor or the resolution that's going to come to the floor suggesting that Mr. Holder be held in contempt. I don't think anybody... Uh, outside of the committees has had an opportunity to consider this very weighty, important uh, matter, a uh, very uh, uh, disruptive matter, if I will say, and distracting matter. Um, what procedure does the gentleman uh, suggest is going to be pursued next week on this matter? I yield to my friend. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd respond to the, to the gentleman. I think the gentleman does know this is a privileged resolution of which he speaks, and uh, it would be subject to the one-hour rule. Uh, just as privileged resolutions were under their majority, Mr. Speaker, uh, and uh, we will proceed, expect to uh, proceed accordingly. Yield back. Uh, I thank the gentleman for that information, uh, which means that uh, a, a matter of great weight uh, is going to be brought to the floor uh, within just a few days of being uh, passed out of committee. Uh, with uh, a relatively short period of time for either debate uh, or for consideration. Uh, there is, of course, precedent, and the gentleman's correct. Uh, it is a privileged resolution, and I understand the rules under privileged resolutions, but I do understand that this is a matter that's going to require a very careful, uh, judicious, if I will, if I can say, uh, consideration. Uh, and uh, to, to bring it up uh, at a time when uh, we ought to be focused on jobs. 
when you're trying to do two appropriation bills, when you're talking about the highway bill, and we're talking about the student loan bill, uh, and to treat it as uh, somewhat of a, a suspension bill provision uh, with little time to really uh, uh, have it discussed uh, with the seriousness that the subject matter uh, requires, uh, I would suggest to the gentleman that this is uh, going to be a, not only a distraction, uh, but uh, an unfortunate uh, uh, taking our focus off uh, creating jobs here in, in, in America. I yield to my friend if he wants to make uh, a comment. I, I'd, 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 Mr. Speaker, I'd say to the gentleman, uh, this, this is an issue of um, you know, making sure that the American people are given an opportunity to uh, have all the information surrounding uh, the, the issues uh, involved with the Fast and Furious program. Uh, this is an issue that we feel, uh, as has um, been indicated by the actions of Chairman Issa, uh, that in acting with all reason, uh, asking of the administration and the Attorney General to produce certain documents, the Attorney General having agreed to produce certain documents, then refusing to do so, Chairman Issa leading up to the vote in committee the other day had said all along if the Attorney General had produced the documents that there be a postponement of the hearing and in the same fashion, Mr. Speaker, I say to the gentleman, uh, Democratic Whip, if the Attorney General uh, would do what it is he committed to do and produce the documents, we'll postpone the vote. Uh, we've not seen any indication of that. He has not done that, and that's why I've announced uh, the vote. I yield back. Uh, let me ask the gentleman, does the gentleman intend to uh, go to the Rules Committee to get a rule or bring the privilege resolution directly to the floor? I yield to my friend. Mr. Speaker, I would say that uh, some of that is still in the discussion, but this resolution does have privilege. I yield back. With respect to the uh, uh, there's another piece of legislation I'd like to ask the gentleman about, the Violence Against Women Act, uh, which again the Senate passed in overwhelmingly bipartisan fashion, uh, which we passed in a relatively partisan fashion over here where the parties were uh, split. Uh, will the gentleman tell me uh, whether or not he knows the status of, the, of that uh, legislation and uh, whether or not we expect to consider that anytime soon? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would just say to the gentleman, as he knows uh, the Senate has uh, the uh, so-called blue, blue slip problem with its bill, um, and uh, that is about as far as I know uh, as to progress in the Senate. As the gentleman knows, we passed the bill here in the House, uh, did so recognizing the suggestions, incorporating the suggestions that the GAO uh, had made as to how to streamline the grant programs uh, and the Violence Against Women's Act uh, to allow for dollars to reach victims in a more expeditious manner. Uh, we uh, full, uh, uh, wholeheartedly support the passage of that, as the gentleman in, uh, saw when it passed the House. Would like to see a uh, resolution on this. Yield back. I thank the gentleman. As the gentleman knows, we believe that. Uh, uh, the bill that passed the House on violence against women uh, frankly left out a lot of women, uh, reduced the scope uh, that the Senate passed uh, with, again, a bipartisan vote uh, with, frankly, all the women on the Republican side of the aisle in the United States Senate voting for uh, the Senate bill. We think the House bill restricted uh, uh, the coverage of that bill. It seems to me that we ought to be against violence against all women. Uh, and other uh, persons that may be subject to uh, domestic violence. Um, so that we would hope that that matter could be resolved, uh, frankly, along the lines of making sure that all people were protected from domestic violence. Lastly, uh, can I ask the gentleman what he expects the schedule for the balance of July to be? And again, I would reiterate, as the gentleman knows, we have very, very few days left uh, less than 30 full days between now and the election uh, following this week. Uh, there are another eight days that are 630 days, uh, or some number, either seven or eight, 630 days. So we don't have very much time uh, to deal with some of the pressing problems, including uh, dealing with middle tax, middle class tax cuts. 
to make sure that uh, working people in this country uh, who are uh, having a hard time making ends meet don't get an increase in their taxes on January 1st. Can the gentleman tell me uh, uh, what he expects the schedule to be in the month of July? And I yield to my friend. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I respond to the gentleman and, and say to the gentleman that, again, if he looks at the schedule, we are scheduled and have been in accord with that schedule in session more days this year than we were in a similar year last session. Uh, so I would say to the gentleman the schedule is right on track. Uh, the predictability, the certainty of this schedule has allowed for the work uh, to continue. Uh, and we will be here uh, throughout July. Uh, our intention is to continue the focus on job creation. Uh, we will be looking, obviously, towards the Supreme Court and what its actions uh, may bring next week on the issue of Obamacare. Uh, if we have to act uh, in response to that to assure all Americans uh, that we want and care about their health care, uh, if we have to act, we will do so. Uh, if the court does not strike down uh, the bill in its entirety. Uh, the gentleman knows uh, our conference is fully committed to repeal, total repeal of the Obamacare bill. In July, we conti continue to focus on that bill and its impact on employers. Uh, we also are very concerned about the overreach of the regulatory agencies in this town and intend to bring forward uh, a bill with a series of provisions uh, which will address uh, the red tape that has begun to strangle the innovation and growth in this economy. And we will also be very focused uh, on a measure to stop the tax hike that is facing the American people this year. Uh, and uh, if you look at the enormous and the enormity of the tax hike, it is something that's hanging over this economy. It's hanging over the mindset of small business people, working families. I don't think anybody would advocate raising taxes, especially in this economy. And that will, uh, those will be the outline of, of our work uh, with uh, obviously some other measures uh, that uh, may be brought up in July. I yield back. I thank the gentleman for his comment. Uh, let me just add, uh, Mr. Speaker, that uh, uh, clearly uh, when you look at the Congress to which he referred uh, in terms of its productivity uh, in the 2007, 2008 years, uh, we think the productivity was very much higher. I won't go through those figures, uh, the litany of those figures, but I think if the majority leader reviews them, he'll see in terms of the productivity of the uh, Congress, uh, we moved America much further forward. Having said that, uh, I want to uh, say that uh, we hope that we will continue to focus on uh, jobs. Uh, I know the gentleman, uh, and I share the gentleman's view, and I think all of us share that we want to have reasonable regulations. Uh, that help grow the economy, not impede its growth. Uh, we're for that. Uh, we may have a difference of opinion on what that does. We think deregulating uh, the protection of our environment. Uh, we think uh, deregulating uh, the safety of our financial markets, which when we took the referee off the field, had an extraordinarily negative impact uh, on this country and every taxpayer in this country and every business in this country, uh, was not useful, was not helpful. And so I think we have a difference of opinion on whether or not we want to make sure there is a level playing field, a fair playing field for all the participants in our economy, uh, both uh, businesses and consumers. Uh, clearly, there was an effort that's being made to uh, undermine uh, the ability of the uh, CFTC uh, to uh, uh, fully oversee uh, what was a market that went out of control. And as a result, uh, with dire consequences to our country and its fiscal status. So I'm hopeful that uh, we don't pursue a regulatory agenda, which is uh, an agenda that uh, is a net result in taking the referee off the field. I don't think the American public wants that. I don't think they think that's reasonable. Uh, but further, I think they think we really need to be focused on things that immediately will grow this economy. The highway bill would have done that. Unfortunately, the highway bill has stayed. Uh, uh, in limbo for too long a time. I'm hopeful that we can move it. Unless the gentleman has something further to say, Mr. Speaker, I'll yield back the balance of my time. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. Mm -hmm. What person the gentleman from Virginia rise? Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that when the House adjourns today, to adjourn to meet at 2 p.m. on Monday next.
Without objection. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, I offer a motion to instruct Compreys on H.R. 4348. The clerk will report the motion. Motion to instruct Compreys on H.R. 4348, offered by Mr. Hoyer of Maryland. Mr. Hoyer of Maryland moves that the managers on the part of the House at the conference on the disagreeing votes of the two houses on the Senate amendment to the bill H.R. 4348 be instructed to recede from disagreement to the amendment of the Senate. Pursuant to Clause 7 of Rule 22, the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Hoyer, and the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Schuster, each con will control 30 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Maryland. I thank the uh, speaker. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to rev revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on my motion to uh, uh, instruct. Without objection, it's ordered. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentlemen's recognized. Mr. Speaker, tomorrow will mark, as I said a little earlier, 100 days since the United States Senate approved its bipartisan compromise highway bill uh, in the United States Senate. Seventy-four senators voted for that, half of uh, the, essentially half of the Republican conference in the United States Senate voted for that bill. Uh, there has been a bill in the House committee. That bill has languished in the House committee for uh, many, many months. Uh, in fact, about four months after the speaker, speaker said he wanted to bring it to the floor. It has not come to the floor, apparently because the Republican Party uh, is divided. Uh, on that bill, and they don't have the votes uh, for that bill. Uh, the measure that passed the Senate, 74 to 22, uh, and it would have been, by the way, 75 to 22, had Frank Lautenberger been there. He made that statement on the floor. That's three quarters of the Senate uh, with the support of 22 Senate Republicans. Americans uh, are wishing that we would come together, reason together, and act together to give certainty to, uh, to them to the economy and to their country. Unfortunately, uh, the House bill uh, that was passed uh, was a, effectively a bill simply to go to conference. Uh, now, I know my friend, uh, and he is my friend, Mr. Schuster from Pennsylvania, will say that uh, in the article that was written that it was uh, uh, simply that House bill to which he was referring. I take him at his word he was referring to that. Uh, but very frankly, others have said uh, that uh, there were items in the bill in committee that were critically important to, to them that ought to be uh, in the conference committee report, and obviously the Senate would not agree to those. This bill to which I refer and which this uh, motion to instruct uh, uh, refers is supported by the Chamber of Commerce in cities and counties across this nation. This is truly a bipartisan piece of legislation in the great tradition of transportation bills passed since the Eisenhower era. Uh, the gentleman who is managing the time on the Republican side, father, was a great proponent of infrastructure investment, great leader in this Congress on infrastructure, and in fact participated uh, on every time that I think he brought a bill out or uh, as ranking member uh, he worked with was passed in a bipartisan fashion. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't gotten to that point at this point in time. Instead of taking up that bill, the Senate bill, and allowing us to have a vote on it here in the House, and in my opinion, if the Republican leadership let its members vote free of influence by the leadership, that bill would have the majority votes on this House floor. Speaker Boehner has said he wants this House to work its will. In my uh, point of view, uh, in my estimation, that bill has a majority support on the floor of this House. It would have, I think, every Democratic vote, every Democratic vote, just as uh, the Export-Import Bank had every vote on our side of the aisle. And that's why it passed overwhelmingly, notwithstanding 
uh, Republican opposition. The, the caucus on the other side of the aisle, in my opinion, remains divided over how to proceed. House Republicans have, once again, turned an opportunity to invest in job creation into a partisan exercise in saying no to any legislation that might strengthen our recovery and lower our unemployment rate. Now, I'm not unmindful, and I believe the gentleman from Pennsylvania will observe there apparently has been some progress made. The progress that has been made is unknown to the Democratic side of this aisle. Neither the ranking member knows uh, what progress has been made, uh, nor the ranking member of the subcommittee knows what progress has been made. But we're going to be told, apparently, there's some progress that's been made. I hope that's the case. Uh, but very frankly, if that progress is not made, we ought to pass the Senate bill. When presented with a real chance to lead, uh, frankly, uh, Republicans, in my view, too often uh, have walked away. Whether it was keeping government uh, going on uh, continuing resolutions, uh, whether it was on uh, making sure that uh, the most reliable, credit-worthy nation in the world did not default on its debts, whether it was on passing an export-import bank to make sure that we created jobs and were competitive uh, in this country. Too often, uh, our Republican friends have decided uh, not to go there. Republicans have been unable to or unwilling to act on must-pass bills. In several cases, played a dangerous game by holding bills hostage. As I said, this includes the debt limit crisis last summer and the debt overextending the middle-class payroll tax last December. Over and over again, our Republican colleagues have proven themselves to be the walk-away caucus. This Congress has been in session for only 60 days so far this year. Between now and the election, we're scheduled to be in session for 38 days, but only 30 of those are full work days. Between now and the election, that's four months from now. 30 days between today, June 21st, and the election in November. With one wasted opportunity after another, they've earned the 112th place in history as truly another do-nothing Congress, a phrase made famous by Harry Truman. Mr. Speaker, my motion is simple. It instructs House Camperees to agree to the Senate's version that is based on bipartisanship and doing what's right for our economy. What does that bill mean? The Senate bill leverages federal funding to protect 1.9 million jobs. Why is that important? Because we lost 28,000 construction jobs last month alone. Why? Because we failed to pass this bill. In addition to the 1.9 million jobs uh, that this bill uh, would uh, provide, it would provide another 1 million jobs uh, as we expand transportation opportunities. In my home state of Maryland, Nearly 29,000 jobs are supported by federal transportation investments. Those are jobs of families who are paying taxes, uh, sending their kids to school, buying groceries, buying uh, uh, goods and services, and supporting our economy. In, in Speaker Boehner's home state of Ohio, over 55,000 jobs are supported by this bill. And in Virginia, Republican Leader Cantor's home state, almost 40,000 jobs are on the line. That highway funding expires July 1st, just a few days from now. For the sake of all these workers, for the sake of all these families who rely on these jobs, and for the sake of all those workers and families who would be advantaged by the passage of these bills and the jobs that it will create, not only save, but create. In Maryland, in Ohio, in Virginia, my colleague Mr. Moran is here, and across our country, Ladies and gentlemen of this House, let's pass a transportation bill that isn't simply another short-term extension. Such extensions provide no certainty to the businesses that rely on sound infrastructure to move goods to market. Let's pass the long-term reauthorization we need that will help put our economy back in drive, not in neutral and not in R, not in reverse. Don't take my word for it, why this is so important and so urgent. Listen to President Ronald Reagan, who said in 1982, and I quote, and I'm sure, frankly, the gentleman, uh, gentleman's dad uh, would have supported these statements. Quote, 
Ronald Reagan, the time has come to preserve what past Americans spent so much time and effort to create. And that means a nationwide conservation effort in the best sense of the word. America cannot afford to throw away, throw away roads or disposable transit system. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not too late for this do-nothing Congress to make a U-turn and get back to work. It's not too late to help pre heed President Reagan's wise words. It's not too late to provide our businesses with the certainty they're asking for. I urge my Re Republican friends to start working with Democrats to make the investments we need to grow jobs and strengthen our competitiveness before it's too late. Frankly, that's what uh, the American people expect. Uh, let's, uh, for once, not disappoint them. Let's pass this motion and work together to move this country forward. And I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Pennsylvania. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise to claim the time in opposition to the motion to instruct, and I yield myself as much time as gentleman's I can make it to. I thank the gentleman. Um, I, a lot of what uh, Mr. Hoyer said I agree with when it comes to uh, moving a transportation bill. Uh, I think it is important to America and our infrastructure is the backbone of our economy and, and we need and we all know I think that it's uh, in many places in the country it's crumbling and we need to uh, here in Congress do our job but this uh, motion to instruct the conferees to accept the Senate bill in its entirety is contrary to the purpose of having a House and a Senate conference and uh, I know my friend from Maryland uh, has been one of the great defenders of this institution uh, and to suggest that we should just up and take the Senate bill is, is a bit surprising to me that, that the gentleman would do that. As I said, he's been a real champion uh, to make sure that the House uh, maintains its position and he's always been a strong defender. So, um, a little surprising. Uh, also, I just like to remind my Democrat colleagues because we've been debating this bill for the uh, the past several months as uh, my colleagues sometimes need to be reminded that when they controlled both the House and the Senate they weren't able to get a bill out of full committee uh, in any basis partisan or, or bipartisan so uh, it has been a difficult uh, road and, and again they, they saw uh, the difficulties back when they were in the majority but it's our responsibility to sit down uh, with our Senate colleagues and address areas where we have differences of opinion. And I might add, too, that uh, there's a statement that uh, just went out from uh, Chairman uh, Boxer and Chairman Micah, joint statement that, that reads, the conferees have moved forward, forward toward a bipartisan, bicameral agreement on a highway reauthorization bill. Both House and Senate conferees will continue to work with the goal of completing a package by next week. So there's been movement. Uh, I, I, I would urge the gentleman to, to retract his, uh, his motion, uh, not offer it, because I, I think there's a point when, the, when the, the chair of the conference and the vice chair of the conference are saying there has been movement. It's, it's very positive. Um, the Senate bill, though, uh, if you want to continue, uh, the Senate bill includes provisions that I have serious concerns with, um, and I believe many on the other side of the aisle would have serious concerns about it. Uh, when they get to study the Senate bill, you'll find that it, it requires that all new passenger vehicles, all new passenger vehicles beginning in 2015 20, be equipped with event data recorders. Uh, these recorders are similar to the, backs, the black boxes that are uh, required in aircraft. While the intent of this provision is to collect safety information, I believe many of us would see it as a slippery slope toward big government and big brother knowing what we're doing, where we are. So again, I think if my colleagues on the other side, and I've, we've talked about uh, uh, different ways to collect data, and, and those on the other side of the aisle have great concerns about allowing information to be collected by, by big brother. Um, and privacy... Uh, uh, is a big concern for, for many uh, in, across America. Uh, there are also areas where the Senate bill does not go far enough. While the Senate bill includes a few provisions to streamline the project delivery process, it does not go far enough. And I believe we are at a time in our history, and, and the gentleman mentioned, many people around here mentioned my father and the good work that he did, and, and he did great work. Uh, but the times have changed in the sense that the last two highway bills that were passed, the economy was in good shape, uh, the highway trust was flush with cash and we had uh, the ability to, as members of Congress to direct money back to our state and our district. So it's been a very difficult process uh, minus those three things. Um, 
So again, the streamlining projects, the Senate bill does not, in, does not set hard deadlines for federal agencies to approve projects. So they can just go on and on and on and have And that's why it takes 14 to 15 years to build a major uh, highway project in this country. I was just out in Oklahoma City a, a month or so ago and, and um, they, they just opened up the Oklahoma City Crosstown Express. $680 million, it took 15 years to build. Uh, if we're able to do some of these streamlining uh, projects, we believe we can cut that time in half. And so if you just look at that project in Oklahoma City, six, $680 million, on inflation alone, we could have saved 60 to $80 million on that project alone. 60 to $80 million would go a long way in fixing infrastructure in, in Maryland, in Pennsylvania, in Virginia, in New Jersey. Uh, so these are the kinds of provisions. That's just one, uh, setting the hard, hard deadlines. Uh, it does not allow states... Uh, that does not allow state environmental laws to be used in place of the federal environmental laws. When a state has a more rigorous environmental process, like California, uh, like other states, uh, why do they need the federal government's uh, approval when theirs goes far beyond what we do here in Washington, or if it's equal to the federal government? Instead of going through a second environmental regulation or regulatory uh, process, let's let the states use theirs if it's equal to or exceeds the EPA uh, standards. Uh, it does not expand the list of projects that qualify for categorical exclusions. What are categorical exclusions are if you're going to replace a bridge uh, with another bridge in the same footprint, if you're going to expand a roadbed in the current uh, right-of-way, it would allow there to be an abbreviated, a faster process, review process, so that we can get those bridges built faster, we can get those uh, lanes added quicker. Uh, and again, what it comes down to is saving money. Uh, time is money. I think we all know that. Uh, and it also does not expedite projects that are being uh, rebuilt t due to disasters. Uh, and that's something that I think all across this country, and we've seen in Minnesota when the bridge collapsed, uh, 476, 436 days, we were able to construct a major bridge crossing, uh, crossing that river in, uh, in Minnesota. Um, also, uh, pro program consolidation is another important reform that the House has been pushing. Uh, the Senate has been pushing to add two new programs at, at, a, at a dollar cost of three billion dollars a year. At a time when the Highway Trust Fund uh, is, is going broke, uh, we should be focusing our limited transportation dollars on consolidating programs and eliminating uh, wasteful programs, not creating new ones. Uh, funding flexibility for the states, another cre critical uh, uh, point. Uh, that allows the states to fund the most economically significant highway and bridge projects uh, in their state. The federal government should not mandate the states uh, to, to, to plant, plant flowers and beautification. Even bike paths, which I've been a big supporter of bike paths in the past, but today when we have bridges crumbling, when there's safety in question, it's in good conscience we can't tell states to spend that type of money. But if they want to, they can. They can opt out. They can spend that money if they, if they just so desire. But again, I think this is not a time uh, when the federal government should be telling states uh, to spend money on projects that aren't going to be the most beneficial uh, to their constituencies. Um, we need to focus those, those resources. Uh, these are issues that are not addressed in the Senate bill and should be addressed in this conference. And from the statement that I read earlier, I believe we are moving in the direction to adopt uh, much or, or some uh, of what I've was just talked about. So I urge my colleagues to oppose this motion. I would urge the, the gentleman, my friend from Maryland, to, to, to step back again at a time when we're getting so close, as the gentleman full knows, he's been in this institution long enough and negotiated many, many uh, significant pieces of legislation. Uh, this is not a time for us to be out here uh, talking about it, but to, to hunker down, uh, make sure the conferees, the, the, the two chairmen, are able to move forward and to get a bill that's going to benefit America. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself uh, 30 seconds. Gentleman's recognized. Uh, I, I want to say to the gentleman, uh, uh, the items that he mentioned, some of which we may agree on, some of which we may not agree on, uh, frankly could have been included in a bill uh, that the House could have reported out of committee, brought to the floor. That didn't happen. Uh, what we did was, uh, with the inability to pass a bill out that came out of your committee, uh, on the floor of the House. Uh, we then uh, repaired to what was a, essentially a shell of a bill to go to conference. Uh, the problem that I have with the gentleman's statement is I hope that the statement that we may be getting there is correct. But if we may be getting there, we're getting there because we've constantly done motions like this, uh, 30 more seconds, uh, constantly done motions like this to get us to issue. We're talking about uh, some 
two plus million jobs. That's why the Chamber of Commerce is involved. That's why counties, states, and local municipalities are involved, saying come to an agreement. Uh, very frankly, uh, the bill that we passed here had some things that didn't relate to transportation. What the gentleman's mentioned is the, are uh, items that dealt with transportation. Your bill, as you well know, had items in it which were clearly not acceptable to either the President of the United States or which uh, were not unrelated to transportation. The gentleman has 30 additional seconds. The gentleman That's hasn't mentioned any of those. I'm pleased that he hasn't mentioned those. I hope that the House Republicans have now decided that's not going to be the litmus test for whether or not we uh, create jobs and save jobs in the transportation field and give certainty to contractors uh, and to public entities. Uh, at this point in time, I yield two minutes to my good friend uh, from New Jersey, Mr. Sears. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Speaker, I rise to speak in support of Congressman Hoyer's motion to instruct our freeze on H.R. 4348, the Surface Transportation Bill. This motion to instruct our freeze will ask the conference committee to end their differences and support the Senate passed measure. Senate 1813, or MAP 21, was passed by an overwhelming bipartisan majority with a final vote of 74 to 22. Tomorrow marks 100 days since the Senate passed their bipartisan bill. We have just over one week before the, expansion, the extension expires. We cannot afford to pass yet another short-term extension. We need to create jobs here in America. National unemployment is 8.2, and construction unemployment is nearly doubled at 14.2. Summer has officially started, and the construction season is short. We have 1.2 million unemployed construction workers who are waiting for work. MAP 21 eliminate, is estimated to save 1.9 million jobs and create another 1 million jobs. We have a legislative solution to create jobs. It is the Senate bill. Mr. Speaker, I urge my colleagues to put their differences aside and pass a comprehensive reauthorization. MAP 21 was passed on a bipartisan majority in the Senate. Let us do the same here in the House and put America back to work. Thank you. Chairman yields back. Gentleman from Pennsylvania. Uh, I yield myself 30 seconds. Gentleman's recognized for 30 seconds. Uh, just in response to my, my good friend from Maryland, uh, I'm, I'm glad he brought up some of those other provisions uh, uh, and, and their job creating provisions. The Ramp Act, for instance, will unlock the Harbor Trust Fund so we can invest in our ports, which I know uh, the gentleman has a, a major port in, uh, in Maryland. Uh, but those dollars will go into rebuilding and dredging and doing the things that we need to do to be competitive around the world. So that's a jobs act that's in the transportation bill and I might add uh, trans uh, ports are certainly transportation. Uh, we have the, uh, also a reform in there on the uh, coal ash, uh, which is a, an element in what we put into some additional, uh, additional 30 seconds. Gentleman's recognized for additional 30 seconds. Uh, the coal ash, which is an element that is, goes into making cement and, of course, building roads and bridges. It's about cement and, and concrete. So there's another provision that we believe will help our industries uh, to be able to, to continue to make, produce cement to build our roads and find the Keystone Pipeline. And I think all of America, or most of America, knows it's been paying attention, uh, which is about 80 percent, believe it is a positive thing to bring oil and energy to America uh, to help power this economy while creating 20,000 jobs and maybe as much as 100,000 jobs in, in uh, indirect labor and, and jobs to, to this country. And with that, I continue to reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Maryland. I yield uh, two minutes to the distinguished uh, uh, ranking member of the uh, Science and Technology Committee, Ms. Johnson from Texas. The gentlelady from Texas is recognized for two minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise in support of the Democratic uh, Whip Hoyer's motion to instruct the conferees, which directs the conferees to agree to the Senate passed Transportation Bill, MAP 21. MAP 21 passed the Senate by a strong bipartisan vote. 
74 to 22. And it is critical that the House pass this legislation. We have been waiting a very, very long time. I'm from the state of Texas. There is no state in the union that this bill is more important for. Our season is now to get highways started, and, and we have massive infrastructure needs just like the rest of the country. Tomorrow does mark the 100th day since the Senate passed this bill, and the current reauthorization will expire next week. And while I'm encouraged by the progress being made in the conference negotiation, we simply cannot afford to delay any longer for individual pleas for individual needs. We all have needs. This bill is not perfect. No bill we pass is perfect. But this bill would provide certainly needed and to plan and develop. We have to have time for states to look at what they have available and plan for it. We cannot do this like any other bill. This is a transportation bill, infrastructure planning bill. And we simply must do something now. In addition to it, saving 1.9 million jobs, it creates a million jobs. It's a jobs bill. We've been talking about passing a jobs bill for the last almost two years, and nothing has passed yet. I am pleading that we all support this motion to instruct, because I encourage my colleagues to, to support it, and let's get this bill done. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. Gentleman from Maryland reserves. Gentleman from Pennsylvania. I continue to reserve my time. Gentleman from Pennsylvania reserves. Gentleman from Maryland. I, I yield uh, two minutes to the gentlelady from Illinois, Ms. Schakowsky. Gentlelady is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the gentleman for yielding. To not support Congressman Hoyer's, Whip Hoyer's motion to the Senate Transportation Bill, for which Many times it's been said, 74 senators, including 22 Republicans, voted. I would suggest is to engage in nothing less than economic sabotage. Well into the construction season, the unemployment rate in the construction industry is at least twice the national average, and another short-term extension will not bring enough certainty to an industry that is hurting as badly as this one is. MAP 21 is the single largest jobs bill passed by either body in this Congress. In my home state of Illinois alone, MAP 21 will save or create nearly 70,000 jobs. Nationwide, the bill will save or create nearly 2 million jobs and spur 1 million additional jobs through the leveraging of transportation funds. It is hard to understand as we are uh, ending the, the month of June and construction needs to be done all over this country, that we are still just delaying the passage of a bill that means so much to the workers across the country and to strengthening our economy. Um, I think that we need to support this motion right now, to support MAP 21, and to send it to the President's desk immediately. And I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. Gentleman from Maryland reserves. Gentleman from Pennsylvania. I continue to reserve the balance Gentleman of my time. Gentleman from Pennsylvania reserves. Gentleman from Maryland. Thank you. Oh, I yield uh, two minutes to the distinguished gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Moran. Gentleman from Virginia is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I would say to our good friend from Pennsylvania uh, that it is hard to believe that Chairman Bud Schuster would not be as troubled as we are by the state of the transportation bill. And he would be saying as we are, just do it. If you have suggested any number of things where we would reach agreement, uh, I would say to my friend from Pennsylvania. Uh, but, uh, you know, this has been going on for almost three years. It was back in October of 2009 that we got a one-month extension. Then we extended it for 48 days, then 72 days, then 16 days, then nine and a half months, then two months and four days, then six months and 25 days, then six months and 91 days, and now we're talking about another three-month extension. Let's just do it. That's why this instruction to accept the Senate bill, if, uh, if we know what we need, 
then let's reach compromise and get it done. Because meanwhile, people are unemployed. The American people are hurting. And the American public is disgusted with the Congress. When we had a 13% approval rating, I was wondering how we had so many family and friends. Well, sure enough, now it's dipped down to single digits. Why? Because they don't see us doing anything. They don't see us compromising. In the Senate, we have a Senate transportation bill where people as conservative as uh, uh, the Republican uh, uh, Jim Inhofe, the ranking member of surface transportation, has approved this. It passed. Three-quarters of the Senate approved this. Why can't we just accept this, get it done? We're talking about almost three million jobs that would be saved or created. We are in desperate need of jobs. There are jobs in this country, and they're going to have a lasting dividend once we improve our roads and our bridges and our public transit systems. We need to get this done. The American people have been waiting two and a half years for this surface transportation bill. That's why the uh, motion to instruct is so important, why I support Mr. Hoyer, because this is what the American people want. And the fact is that it, while it maintains current funding levels for highway and public transportation, consolidates highway programs, national freight programs, any number of things, we can agree. It's not perfect, but it's the best we can do, and the American people deserve it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Uh, I yield myself as much time as I consume. Uh, I, I appreciate the, the passion from the gentleman 